ask me anything by Brainology. Welcome everybody, welcome all the children on one more session of Ask Me Anything. Today's session, we are going to meet someone very special and I think you can guess that someone special has something to do with mountaineering, right? So, warm welcome to Mr. Vikas Dimri. Mr. Vikas, welcome on board. We and the children are delighted to have you. Why do you need training here? I mean, I mean, I have climbed stairs, I have done trekking, I have not done any special training for it. So for mountaineering, what is the special training and why is it required? Okay, let me ask you a question in turn. Uh, sure. And this is for all the kids as well. So how tall do you think Mount Everest is? Uh, children, on the chat, let me see if you know the height of Mount Everest. Ah, yes, people are 8827, 88, 29,000 feet. Oh, we've got a bunch of educated children on the show, Mr. Dimri. I think everybody knows. Oh, there is one, yeah, one like 80,000. No, no, I think that is too much. Much. Though the measure could be different, but one lakh eighty thousand is definitely not. But yes, most of you have got it right. It is eight thousand eight hundred and forty-eight, or you know, meters, or eight point eight kilometers. Somebody also wrote it in twenty-nine thousand feet. But because can you give that in you know perspective? Because it's easy to put a number, right? But how high is eight thousand eight hundred and forty-eight meters? So you uh, you mentioned uh, Anupam that you know we all climb stairs and climb steps. You know, so uh, I live in a building where I live on the forty-second level from the ground and sometimes I climb steps to the 42nd level wow. but uh, that is not enough really when you have to climb Everest uh, imagine Everest to be a building it will be 2500 floors high 2, that's how 500 floors wow Everest okay. will be 2500 floors high but let me kind of give you another perspective when you fly in a, into an airplane uh, between Bombay or Delhi or Bombay and Calcutta the altitude at which the airplane flies when it reaches its cruising uh, altitude that's nearly uh, 8800 meters or 9,000 meters. So when the next time when you go out and look up in the sky and you see an airplane, that's pretty much the uh, summit of Everest. So what is the training required at that height when you have to climb? What what does it do to you? What's what's the environment like there? Okay, I go back to the airplane example, uh, Anupam again. You know, you when you fly in the airplane and this is, you know, summers and sometimes when you're inside the airplane, they train you, the air hostess comes and gives you a security brief. She says that there could be turbulence. Sometimes there could be, you know, lack of oxygen and an oxygen mask will drop. You need oxygen. Yes. Yes. That is because at that altitude, Air is very rare and oxygen is one third the level of uh, at sea level. And when we say one third the level of sea level, it essentially means that, you know, the amount of oxygen we take while we are speaking and as we, you and I are speaking right now, we are breathing. And like everyone is, you know, they don't even realize they're breathing. But to get the same amount of oxygen at the top of Everest, you need to breathe in thrice. And then you get the amount of oxygen that you need in one breath, right? Wow. And imagine you have to climb a mountain that is so high, which is harsh and very cold and very windy. And it is tough with a lot of load and very heavy equipment with you. Wow. So I can imagine all of this with only a little oxygen. Well, I mean, I mean, I can understand. So, I mean, when we climb up the stairs also, we get breathless, right? So you are saying if the same stairs I had to climb, it's going to take me three times more effort. Three times more effort for 2,500 floors. Wow. Wow. So, okay. I mean, that, I mean so Ayushi, ask, Ayushi is asking a question. How much oxygen do you have to carry? As in, you know, what is the weight of the oxygen tank that, you know, you have, that's the kind of oxygen if you have to, you know, sort of support for. Do you carry oxygen? How, how, how is it? That's a very good question. You know, when we are, uh, when we are climbing up to a particular point, which is called the death zone, that's about 8,000 meters altitude. The oxygen levels are low, but you know, we, uh, you can't carry so much of oxygen. Uh, because uh, it will be more than your own weight of oxygen that you carry for a, uh, for a long expedition. So we limit the amount of oxygen that we carry and we only carry the oxygen for the final summit day from 8,000 meters to the summit and then back. And that usually is a, uh, about four to five kgs of oxygen with cylinder and that's what you carry on your back along with your equipment. Wow. Tell me, uh, Sukas, what's like the, is it, it's very cold there. Is it, is it very, I, I see flags fluttering like crazy over there. Uh, tell us something about that. Oh, it gets really bad because, you know, this is, this is near the stratosphere. So all, all your children who are, you know, who studied geography uh, know what a stratosphere is. 
9000 meters is almost the edge of the stratosphere right so this is pretty much going out into space at this altitude the wind patterns are very very different and there is a particular phenomena called the jet stream these are high speed winds which blow only 8000 meters and above and they blow at nearly 200 kilometers an hour it also gets really cold because the higher you go from the sea level the colder it gets and the temperatures at a, at the summit of everest go down to as low as minus 60 degrees celsius now how cold is minus 60 degrees celsius that's the average temperature on the north pole wow tell us something about the training i mean how do you train for this i mean i'm sure the children will be excited to know what kind of training do you have to do for this uh, firstly mountaineering is is a sport of skill and like anything that you want to take up you have to learn the basics first so you have to learn how to use the equipment you have to learn how to read the mountain you have to learn how to how to uh, read the weather because the weather is going to be very tough and uh, you should be able to understand by looking at the sky if it is going to rain or is it going to snow you should be able to look at the uh, sun and uh, and see you know what it is going to feel like by the end of the day uh, you have to train your body physically to be able to climb 2500 floors right wow. or mm-hmm. on an effort of that kind and of course you know the food there is very minimal you know you can't carry so much of stuff so you carry your bags loads lot of load carrying so physically you have to become stronger but also mentally you have to prepare for being in a tough situation no better way of preparing yourself mentally than to actually go out and do it regularly and what about the mental strength i think tell us something about that vikas how how do you train for being mentally strong to do this uh, the best way to train for a tough challenge is to imagine the tough challenge in the mind you know you you have to imagine that you are in the challenge one of the best ways to prepare for a mental challenge and you know to build will power and toughness is to actually go out and explore what is your limit every time you know as young kids you know all of us want to see what are our limits right how hot is the vessel you want to touch it and feel it to see how really hot it is till the point it starts to burn now there is curiosity about this and there is danger around this but the best way to learn to deal with setbacks and to deal with challenges is to actually go to the limit correct and 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 i think ansh is asking- asking one question sir are you even made to climb a smaller mountain as part of the training yeah it's a it's a good question you have to keep doing a lot of uh, climbing you do small treks in and around your place then go to the himalayas do a little more uh, you know elaborate treks and then slowly move up one level up one day at a time Also let me put this question out there does do every does everybody understand what a glacier is just type in into the chat tell me what a glacier is it is savya says it's a huge more snow elena says rolling snow vaishnavi says ice mountain seema says ice sheet mishti says honestly i don't know that's nice naisa says blocks of ice uh prisha says melted snow mudit says a river of ice so vikas expert please educate us oh this is a nice one shailesh says a huge block of ice which melts to form a stream anshes junk of ice yeah so wonderful. so vikas yeah, wonderful yeah, I think you know i mean we have a lot of educated answers, kids a lot of very knowledgeable kids and as you can see uh, on the uh, on the screen is what is the khumbu uh, glacier and the khumbu ice fall a glacier is a mass of ice which is moving from a little higher uh, level to lower levels and therefore because it is moving it is like a river of ice but it moves so slowly that you know you really can't see it moving uh, and then there are parts of the glacier you know especially when the gradient is a little higher when it uh, it is moving from a very steep uh, gradient that part of the ice fall is much like a waterfall uh, the glacier is much like a waterfall at the end of the glacier is when the glacier starts to melt it turns into streams as somebody said and then those streams converge to form a river that that's what a glacier is can you tell us because some something about you know these are huge huge chunks of ice right so so how how do we make sense of you know how big this could be can you give some example i think that example about ice buckets and then you know climbing just can you help us with that example yeah so what you see on screen uh, anupam is is the khumbu ice fall it's it's part of the glacier where you know the ice starts to fall over the uh, hill uh, much like a waterfall a waterfall a lot of you have seen is basically you know water falling over a hill uh, then there is the frozen waterfall when the ice when the waterfall actually freezes and becomes solid and stops moving but an ice fall is actually a glacier falling just like a waterfall wow okay uh, visualize this right you have a bucket full of ice cubes with you and you slowly roll down the buckets the cubes of ice right imagine visualize these cubes falling except 
accept that they are falling in very 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 slow motion and accept that each block of ice is like a six story building wow and then you have to keep climbing that right and that's the kumbu ice fall for you wow. and you have to climb up this waterfall up this ice fall through this crumbling pieces of ice and this through these crumbling six story buildings of uh, ice and sometimes you have to climb over them sometimes you have to go under them and that's how you climb to the top wow becomes especially dangerous when the sun comes up and the snow and ice starts to melt a little bit but when it is melting and these blocks of ice keep falling there could be a good chance that you are actually standing underneath that block of ice and just falls over wow. so we climb in the night we start our climbing at 12 in the night and then climb through the night trying to reach the top of the ice fall before the sun comes up ah. that's how we climb usually wow but can you see in the night uh, because i mean how how do you it's not so clear right so there are some dangers of going in the night and climbing in the night as well right uh, yeah i mean uh, climbing in the night like you rightly said you can't see but we carry headlamps we put them on our he- helmets and we wear helmets because ice is falling all over you it's slippery if you fall you can just bump your head somewhere uh, you know ice and rock falls on your head so we put a helmet on top of the helmet we put a headlamp which focuses right in front of you and we just keep climbing looking at the path which gets illuminated you can't see much left and right but uh, whatever you can see is good enough to you for you to climb wow. uh, it gets really cold in the night but uh, uh, but a lot safer than climbing during the day yeah and all that climbing must definitely make you tired right so tell me what do you guys eat yeah have to carry our food up we don't have swiggy delivering yeah. of course but you know i have two stories here we heard somebody was unwell at base camp and had had an accident so there was a helicopter which was going to come from kathmandu to pick them up the moment we heard there's a helicopter coming up to pick them up we called up the helicopter company and told them to pack a bag of mangoes for us so that you know when the helicopter comes to pick this person up you would collect the mangoes oh, wow. that was a si- swiggy right look at that let me do a poll check with uh, you know with the children okay what do you think children is the food that the mountaineers eat on top of the mountain when they have do they eat salad do they eat maggi do they eat chicken or do they just drink milk let's see what are the answers which come i think nothing no 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 nothing how is that possible nuts okay that's an interesting answer okay juice eggs milk savia says maggi salad amisha says salad manveer says chicken frozen food okay that's in any food will get frozen there i am assuming so frozen food is an interesting answer canned food kriti says canned food okay vikas sir tell us tell us what is the food that the mountaineers are you know eat and and what's the story behind it as we go up higher it's not possible to carry too much of food so the easiest food to make there is maggi oh wow did and you know the children <laughs> but you know i'm sure you, the parents will not like it <laughs> because what is unhealthy in the cities is healthy in the mountains uh, so it's very important to eat healthy when you're in the city uh-huh. so that you can become strong to climb the mountain okay so- can you see this man you know see this right because wow. can you see this yeah I now you see, see the size of the bucket now you see this look at this is the size of the glacier can you understand now wow. look at this look at the size of the person and the ladder this is the size of that one glacier which they have to keep climbing these cubes right? of ice six story buildings that we have to climb up and down as we go up and uh, you know they are nearly vertical it's like you know you are climbing from not the stairs in your building but rather you know you're climbing 2500 floors from outside the building i think we should show the kids your equipment right why do, why don't you show us the kind of equipment which you have to carry and what each of them does so vikas sir over to you uh, we've heard of this thing called an ice axe right what does the ice axe look like what does it do uh, guys can you see this this is the ice axe yes all right this is a real ice axe okay the ice axe is is what is called the third leg of the mountaineer it's like a stick you can use it like a walking stick you can use it like an axe to climb a wall you hit it on the ice hold it and then climb up or you can use it to shovel the snow from this side uh, the most important piece of equipment though is this helmet mm-hmm. right and the, like i said the ice is tough there will rock fall and you know somebody knocks you on the head you know your head remains sane mm-hmm. and it gets really cold so we wear these mittens these wow. are like gloves Those right big really big, big ones to keep ourselves out from the cold protect our fingers we've heard of these stories of frost bites and also i guess these are the kind of mittens which prevents a frost bite to happen right that's right that's right we also wear something like this these are booties they are like the mittens but for the feet right and you wear them like socks inside the tent because you can't wear your boots they are really heavy inside the tent and that brings me to the boots right mm. so uh, anupam this is my regular running shoe yeah right and 
this is another shoe for my uh, for my for the mountain yeah. but this is not just one shoe this shoe goes inside this big mountain boot oh my god so you're saying you first wear the booties then you wear the shoe and then this mountain shoe and then these go inside the shoe boot oh my like God. this and then they become a proper shoe right that is and must you be see heavy. how big it is that must be so heavy it is very heavy just wearing the shoes takes me about 20 minutes wow yes. and then this is the crampon yes. these are spikes that are worn on on the shoe Mm -hmm. and this because these are spikes the glacier is hard ice mm -hmm. it ha you have to be able to get a grip on the ice so we use crampons to climb the mountain mm -hmm. this is how it comes together when you're climbing you know two pairs wow. of shoes inside wow. with crampons at the bottom and this uh -huh. is what we use when we are crossing ladders and bridges we make bridges of ladders between crevasses correct and that's that's what we get oh, yeah. yeah this is the harness you wear on your uh, uh, on your body that's the carabiner. This is, you know, used for holding the rope. Uh, this is an ascender. We use it to climb the mountain, uh, put it on the rope and use to pull. And there is a special piece of equipment. We call it the descender. It's a figure of eight. It is used. It's a very simple piece of equipment. It goes like this, right? You put a rope to it like this and you can use this to descend. Wow. Anish is asking an interesting question. How did that bridge set up, right? It's across a crevice, right? So who was that first person who went to that side? How did that bridge get actually get set up? Oh, uh, we carry ladders, aluminum yeah. ladders. Crevasse is too wide for one ladder. We tie two ladders together, make it longer. And then we slowly lower it like this across, mm -hmm. right? And once it is set up across, then we tie it with ropes on one side. The other side is not yet tied. And then one person goes slowly on top of it any of the team members, right? It is very risky. This is when most accidents happen and somebody can fall over. So, and you know, we tie that person with a rope just in case that person falls. There's a chance that we may be able to pull that person out, but that person will definitely get hurt. And once wow. that person crosses the crevasse, then they put up the other ropes, tie it in, and we go all together. Wow, that's right. a great lesson. I actually, and that was many people were asking this question. Did you go alone? Did you go with somebody? So I think that's the answer. Arsh has an interesting question because does the face and nose freeze as they are still open and exposed? That's a great oh, question. It is very, very cold. Uh, the ears and the nose are pretty much uncovered largely. So for the ear also, sometimes we just put a cap on top mm. to keep it closed. The nose gets really cold and they get frostbites most often. Mm. And uh, there are mountaineers who are known to have lost their noses. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. And Vaishnav is asking, were you afraid when you were doing all this? I was very, very afraid. Right. I was more afraid than ever in my life when I was doing all of this. But you know, uh, this is where I want to tell you guys that there is something about being brave and something about being fearless. Mm -hmm. Fearless is about not having any fear at all. And bravery is about having fear and overcoming it. Wow. Right? That, that's a great lesson. And there's an interesting question from uh, Janak Mehr. He's saying, how do you carry these heavy ladders? Oh yes, it is quite heavy. And there are a lot of them we have to carry. But you know, so one team can't carry all the ladders. So there are a lot of teams who are uh, climbing at that point in time. We get together and decide which team. Uh, which so person. when did you start mountaineering? I started mountaineering actually with uh, equipment and uh, training just about five years back. I think someone was asking, which side did you climb it from? Nepal side. I think that one photo of yours really brings alive that. Okay, so this is, you know, uh, on the right hand side is China or Tibet. And on the left hand side is Nepal. But as you can see from the picture, it's extremely steep on both sides. Somebody was asking, do you have phones over there? Do you carry phones at the top? There are satellite phones that work on top. And uh, it is so cold that the phone battery just discharges in no time. So I carried my iPhone to the top to take a picture. But by the time the iPhone started take a picture, the iPhone battery died. See, this is the picture, children, on the top of the mountain. Once you reach it, this is the highest point in the world, right? You're on the highest point in the world. People can say you can see a lot of things from the top point. Tell us something about that. How's the experience right. from the top? Uh, from here, I could see uh, to my east, right up to Kanchanjunga, which is in India, and to the north, complete barren uh, landscape of Tibet, all brown for really, really far distances i could see the curvature of the earth so clearly and to the south and to the west i could see a carpet of clouds wow. and i was standing on top of the carpet of clouds with some few mountain peaks coming out of the mountain okay vanishka ask your question which was the first day you went to mount everest first time i was in 2014 i i went to the everest base camp and uh, i saw the mountain from there it was so close that i felt that i could get there uh, so i went back again in 2017 to climb mount everest i couldn't climb that year to the top i had to turn back midway and then i went back again in 2018 to be able to reach the summit that year 
my question is uh, how many months did you prepare for uh, climbing your mount everest uh, it was very hard training and preparing for this it took me uh, 12 months to train for the first time and then to uh, turn back uh, i uh, i had to train again for 12 more months to go back and climb How many months or days do you take to climb a mountain? It depends on the size of the mountain and the kind of mountain we are talking about. For Mount Everest, it took me. Uh, uh, it takes about between forty-five to fifty days to climb uh, to complete an expedition to the Mount Everest. It does not necessarily mean that you will reach the top, but the expedition takes that much time. So my question is, what role technology played in climbing Mount Everest? You know, uh, technology for us was largely communication. which was satellite phones and uh, you know connectivity and secondly uh, uh, like i told you the weather is really bad and you should be able to predict and forecast good weather so we used to get really top quality weather forecasts which are you know used uh, developed by of satellite data and uh, top level data modeling because that's an important uh, item of the climb yeah then what age did you climb i climbed everest when i when i turned 44 years right um, but i want to ask you a question in turn Who's the youngest person to have climbed Everest, and what at what age did that person climb? At 44. age fourteen. Wow, that is somebody's got the right answer. Who's that? Purna. Yes, Purna is right. At age thirteen. Do you know the name of the person who climbed it? That that's a very good question. Purna climbed it at age thirteen, and uh, that's she is the youngest Indian to have climbed uh, uh, Everest at age thirteen. The youngest uh, person in the world is a gentleman called uh, uh, Junero from America who climbed it again yeah, at thirteen yeah. years. Yeah. How much time did it take to climb Mount Everest? It takes about thirty-five days from base camp to the summit. It takes about ten days to get to the base camp. Wow! And and one more question is how much does the backpack weigh? The backpack, when fully loaded, can weigh as much as twenty-three kgs. Who was the captain? Do we have a captain in the team, Vikas? When yes, the leader usually usually when you go in a team you always appoint a leader because you you want to uh, somebody has to give you direction and usually the person who is the leader is the most experienced person in the team my leader was a gentleman called Mingma Tenji Sherpa uh, one of the most seasoned climbers in that area yeah so is there a specific path or you can just climb uh, in any direction in any way you want it's a mountain this is there's no road on the mountain right you can climb from anywhere you want to except that you know uh, it's a very difficult mountain to climb that is why for for centuries nobody was able to climb till edmund hillary and tenzing norgay found a way to climb the mountain so my question was when you climb you say you tie rope so where do you tie ropes to sometimes when you know there are very few people climbing then we tie ropes to each other uh, so that if one person falls the other person can hold the person back and sometimes when there are a lot of people climbing so we kind of tie the rope onto the mountain snow or rocks on the mountain and we use that rope to keep ourselves safe did you saw any rivers Uh, Vanchika, the rivers are there. Uh, not uh, it's close to Everest, but not on Everest because Everest is so high that the water is all frozen. So there are no rivers; there are only glaciers. A question from Dishita. Sir, have you ever climbed any other mountain? Yes, Dishita. That's a good question. I have climbed a lot of mountains in India and Nepal before climbing Mount Everest. So you have to train and you have to be prepared. I thought uh, you were telling that you take any random route, right? Because there's no road in the mountain. To ask questions. How can you be sure that the route will be safe? Yes, Ayushi, that's a good question again. So you know, uh, I said that you know you can take any route that you want to, but part of the training. and part of the education that you get as a mountaineer is to be able to spot the right route to go through a mountain right so we we know what routes to make which can be easier and can be manageable where the hazards are lesser because there are a lot of people climbing at the same time around the same time the route pretty much gets defined because somebody has already gone that path earlier what is a summit summit is the top of the mountain is the peak is the highest point of the mountain that's the summit Um, how long were you there at the top? Savia, like I said, there's very little oxygen. It's very harsh climate there, so you can't spend too much time there. I was on top for about twenty minutes, and that's the time I took to absorb what I could see. I didn't take too many pictures then because I just wanted to absorb all through my eyes and internalize it, taking the moment. Sir, be- before you started engineering, what was your passion? I was always passionate about outdoors. I was always passionate about nature, about environment, and I've realized that when you go outdoors, you learn a lot and you become a better person. Therefore, you know, I also started something called Open Skies, a venture to help children explore the outdoors and learn from the outdoors. 
So, um, which was the latest mountain you climbed? The last mountain I climbed, uh, Anna was was Mount Everest. Mm, wow. And Yushan has an interesting question. Do you get a cold when you climb the summit? In fact, this is something that you know you should go and tell your parents, all of you, okay, that you never get a cold from being in a cold weather. You only catch a cold when you are in warm weather. Have you done fit fitness before going to the mountains? I have done a lot of fitness training before going to the mountains because you know I couldn't survive otherwise. Once again, Vikas, thank you for your patience and thank you for all that you shared with us. I'm sure you had a good time. I'm sure the kids had a great time. Hello. I hope you liked this edition of Ask Me Anything. If you did, do show your love by pressing this like button over here. And if you have any comments and want to give us any feedback. Press on this comment button and express your opinion. And if you absolutely love us and want to know when is our next edition of Ask Me Anything, press the subscribe button. And till then, keep thinking of questions so that you can ask me anything.